We're just some little farm girls pushing through. The Growing the Future podcast is brought to you by Aberhart Egg Solutions. Join us as we talk to top entrepreneurs in the agricultural space about their methods of obtaining success in their endeavors. And now, your host, Dan Aberhart. Yeah, so we're talking about the tulips, and we immediately jump to the origin story. Yeah. Season one, episode one of the tulips. How did you get the name? Well, our neighbor boy, um, he's autistic and same age as Steph. And he would, we would be driving and he would see us in our truck and he would shout to his mom, the tulips. Every couple of days he would see us because we live very close to each other. And um, that kind of, when we decided to start this platform, that was easily our name choice. Yeah. So is he giving dividends now that, that you we guys should. are big stars? We should, we really should. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Josh Ron. Hey, great work. <laughs> Love it. Taking yeah. the name international. Yeah. You guys started a page about two years ago, and like we were talking about at lunch, it's on the cusp of turning into something bigger. It's, it's kind of a platform that you guys are bringing farming and fashion and, and you know, things about your family to the world. So tell me a little bit about yourselves, where you're from, and, and your farming gig and, and whatnot. Well, I'm Cassandra, and I'm the older sister. Um, I have a business degree from Brandon University, and I always thought I would work for Springland, our family business. Um, but I started farming while going to school, and it just stuck, and I really liked it, and continued on. I'm Stephanie, so I'm the younger sister. I went to school to be a graphic designer. I thought I'd work in marketing in my dad's company, and then just I didn't like being on the computer screen all day, and I'd rather be out in the field running equipment and yeah I just I really like that better doing a lot of marketing now though I see <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> kind of so fell I'm right still, back into it still I'm in that and I do stuff for my dad and my mom's companies so the big okay. thing that I wanted to know is did you guys actually finish harvest this year uh, yes, so I was there with did. you in the pain we did yeah surprisingly <laughs> I think it was November 23rd that I finished the soybeans on snow <laughs> <laughs> it was once all the metals froze. The one of the last fields of soybeans, we just drove circles and got maybe seventy percent of it off because it was so wet. It was a bit of a nightmare hmm. that we finished, and that's a lot luckier than a lot of people got this year. So I think we were lucky too because we did uh, barley this year. That was it was a third of our farm. So that was done early before all the rain and the farm. How do you guys manage roles and who does what? Um, I do all the seeding and Steph does all the prep work. Yeah, I do all the, like the yeah, prep work and then spraying I took over this year with the ground sprayer. And then and we then, both run a combine in the fall and our yeah. dad is usually the one trucking, although sometimes it's Bill, um, our hired hand, who's really our dad's hired hand, so he just helps out when he has to at, for us. Um, this year was the first year we did it pretty much on our own with no hired hands. It was just us and dad and Bill sometimes, and Dad sometimes. So it was us full time and those two sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so maintenance was a little hectic. Yeah. But... <laughs> so one of your guys' themes is positivity. What, what was positive about farming in 2019? I really felt like I learned more this year because we had way, we didn't, usually we'd have, like some years we've had three guys helping us with maintenance and just keeping stuff running, and this year we didn't, so. We learned a we lot. We learned a lot, and uh, we took over the ground sprayer from last year, years before we've had another guy doing that. So. How long have you guys been farming? Well, I'm 31, and I started when I was, I want to say 19 lightly, and then I've probably been seeding for a decade now, because our dad doesn't want to be yeah. in there at all <laughs> he's got his own projects yeah it's kind of similar a yeah. little bit less for me i guess because i'm younger yeah. and your dad's pr pretty busy with the inventing and manufacturing side yeah. i guess eh? yeah he's a big r d guy always thinking of new ideas always um with springland he's a big push behind their r d and then other projects and then we also have the plane um so he's got a lot of things going on <laughs> with the farm you learned some things this year what are you going to apply this next year 
Um, hopefully, start our <laughs> maintenance. Tough question. Hopefully wow. Start our maintenance earlier. <laughs> yeah, start maintenance earlier. <laughs> Not the day before you start. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Along with yeah. A lot of times we get hung up on our dad's schedule um, because he's the one who's doing the key behind the maintenance is learning from him and Bill, and they're doing other R and D projects right so, until yeah. we got a seed. So, so they don't they don't ever want to take time off to fix stuff. Her dad yeah. hates fixing. And stuff. we like to be a little more proactive than that. So I guess we will keep trying to push that. So and the more we learn, the more proactive we can be on our own without their input. So. So you guys have a lot of crazy plans for the farm in the future? I'd say we want to grow it a little bit yeah. more, buy some more land Buy a bit more land. Um, I think both of us would like to move a little bit into the manufacturing side, which is another side of our life. Uh, keep our farm, but maybe push that Expand, side too yeah. so that we're a little diversified for our income. Right. Yeah. Especially the years like last year, you just, you're not guaranteed anything. Yeah. So you kind of want to have other options. Well, how big is this platform going to get? I mean, are you going to be farming and YouTubing or YouTubing and farming? <laughs> well, we haven't gone into the YouTube yet because no. we're not so good with the videography. Yeah, we need a, that would require another person. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. The Instagram's kind of gone hand in hand with the farming. Some of our shots are a little bit more in depth and take a little bit longer. But oftentimes if we're farming and it's a farm shot, it took five minutes. We got it done and then we went back to work. We're doing them in the moment, so that part's pretty easy, so I think they'll grow with us. Yeah. You mean you didn't just rent a farm for the Instagram page? No, no we did like, This is my farm! <laughs> it's not. amazing! Yeah. It's no. really the neighbors coming by? No. No. We you are, guys are, very we are renting some of our land, but legitimately. <laughs> That's cool. yeah. Many yeah. of us do, and it's yeah. nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. 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 So what is it that you guys grow, and how many acres do you got, and what kind of operation is it? I thought it was rude to ask how many acres. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I thought that was Back up the okay. truck. I, I asked something I uh, inappropriate here. No. <laughs> <laughs> how many acres, Dad? What's your gross margin? Oh. You guys get into your gross margin? Mm, <laughs> I don't know. This year was not good. No. Uh, <laughs> Negative what? <one. laughs> yeah. Hey, it's um, a positive show. We can't go No, there. we have <laughs> we have a couple thousand acres. Um, we do want to grow it a little bit. Uh, we grow we grew malt barley for the first time this year and it went really yeah, well. Australia that was our awesome. best awesome. best crop this year. Um, we do canola. We do straight cut beans. canola. Straight cut canola only. Yeah, that's a lot of the neighbors. Like <laughs> we to hate swathing, us, but <laughs> really do not. We haven't swathed in eight years. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's very controversial, but... Oh, it's extremely controversial. But, yeah, yeah, we definitely... I don't know if we want to go there on this podcast, no. straight cut, canola well, or not. we like it better. Yeah. <laughs> My brother's a big fan. Yeah. <laughs> Come at us if you want to. We'll <laughs> <laughs> so you guys like running the machinery? It seems like you have a lot of fun out there. I mean, the dogs seem to like it. Our dogs Your German it. shepherds. Mm. Our, we don't have German shepherds. I wish. <laughs> I, would, I would like... I thought they were like a, some sort of strain of German shepherd nope. that were, you no. know, no. mini... German Shepherd? Boston, Boston Terrier. <laughs> it's my post. My dog doesn't actually, she doesn't like coming. But, She's very yeah. introverted. She hates the loudness. But, but your Piper, dog is my always dog's gone, everywhere yeah. with me. She's, um, I guess that would stem back to a little bit of mental health. She is my security blanket and I just enjoy having her with me at all times. Do you get registered for like an emotional care dog or something um, like that? I do, but I don't, that's a controversial thing too. I, the only reason I do is because well, I shouldn't say this, but <laughs> my husband's family goes to the mountains every year, and that hotel will not let any dogs up there. Here we go. Here we go. So we won't mention any particular I, chain. I only abuse it then. For but that it's reason. not really abuse because no. it is, it is <laughs> a really <laughs> like thing. Really, I do struggle with anxiety, and she really keeps me level headed um, as much as I can be. That's huge. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. So she really is. She really is my. Sport. Yeah. So you can take it more on the plane? Yeah, we, we pay for them to go on the plane. You pay like $50 a trip with WestJet, but yeah, they fly everywhere with us. These dogs, they can go into Starbucks, they can go into planes. It's it's amazing. Yeah. I, don't know about I, don't, I don't take... Oh, Starbucks. Oh. They can. My sister my oh, sister's what? crossed that threshold. Oh, wow. Yeah, I can oh, refer my. you guys if you want. I can take my you. one great Dane to the, some restaurants here, but... Yeah. Oh, emotional care dog, you can write she, right into Well, she's Starbucks. a therapy dog, so... Yeah. Therapy dog. I take her to hospitals, but... Yeah, Steph does a lot of volunteer with her one dog. Do they... Oh, I saw that. Yeah. That's amazing. So, tell us a little yeah. bit more. You were... You uh, well, we started in November, I think, and we go once a week to the Brandon Hospital. We go to, like, all the wards, any floor. Um, we spend usually four to five hours there, I would say. 
And then we go to the Rivers Personal Care Home and Hospital once a week, too. Yeah. That's amazing. Once a week. Mm-hmm. It's, it's an extremely commitment. special dog. She just... Yeah, she is amazing. I knew she had to do that because she just... She loves everybody and she... Like, Danes are a good height, actually, for hospitals because they can reach. If if somebody's in bed, they can reach her. She puts her head on them and, yeah, yeah. it's it's really good. She's a, she's a one in a million dog. Yes. Yeah. We felt... I think Steph felt selfish keeping her to ourselves because she's yeah. just such a big-hearted animal. So what's the interaction like with this dog and the people? Uh, most people really like her unless they don't like dogs. There's some people that don't want to see her, but I'd say 95% of people really light up when they see her. Yeah. Hmm. you got to remember this is a 130-pound black animal. Like yeah, she, she's, she's a bit she scary. She can be scary to some <laughs> yeah. people, but... She's yeah. a big girl. Yeah. And, like, lots of times she'll come up to you and put her head like either on their chest or if they're laying in bed or yeah it's very sweet we were talking about core values over lunch and and a few of your core values one of them being mental health yeah we like to talk about it um quite often i would say um one of our friends on instagram tara beaver vineyards is her handle she started mental health monday and we like to participate in that because it's just a good thing to talk about farmers have more mental health problem or more susceptible to mental health problems than many of the pub than the majority of the public because i think we're secluded we're by ourselves have a lot of pressure most most of it is male dominated and men don't like to talk about being emotionally weak um and yeah we like to we like to push that it's okay to not be okay and to talk about it yeah Yeah. and everything like a lot of stuff is kind of out of your control like weather and yeah. yeah so we want our page to stay positive but also real and that's a big important factor to us because I definitely I've a couple of years ago I had a really bad bout of anxiety and it's just not a fun place to be so mm. so you mentioned the dogs help yeah what else do you guys do to handle that anxiety um, and mental I health did issues? see a therapist in that moment and it did help but honestly our family is so tight that mm-hmm. The fam, our good, family and our dogs and, good and the friend horses, group. friend yeah. group, yeah. Just being outside with the horses really helps me a lot too. Like yeah. doing that really is soothing to me. So is the isolation of a, of the farm a really big part of that? Yeah, I would say sometimes because a lot of times when we're working, we don't see our friends for months at a time. Uh, we have a good group of friends, but I think when you're a farmer and you travel as much as we do, you don't your friends have to understand that you're not going to be there all the time. And sometimes you you lose people through that. Not meaning to, but like a lot of people want their friends around at all times. And um, the friends that we do have are okay seeing us once a month or once every three months. And we still have the same connection, but you don't see them very much when you're farming. No. (laughs) Yeah. So is the social media helping with the mental health? Um, I would say it does. Mm -hmm. Say so, because... I find like a lot of people now are like posting about their struggles so you can relate a lot more. It's, it's less of a highlight reel. I feel Mm -hmm. it's coming, becoming more popular. And we, we don't put value, like our personal value is not on our page. So if somebody gives us a bad, if we have had very positive interactions, but if we have a negative interaction, it's not, that's not our life. Our life is our family, our friends and our animals. Um, so we don't take it personally, and yeah. I think as long as you keep it that way, then it's, like, if some stranger comes at you, you shouldn't let it drag your life down. And we've made, like, so many good friends from Instagram mm-hmm. that we never would have met outside of it, so that's yeah, been really cool. And a lot of opportunities, so I think the mental health part, it, it's giving us a community we didn't have before, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. And you're sharing your story, right, on, mm-hmm. on Instagram, and you get a good response from that, too. Yeah, honestly, I would say it's 95% positive. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys do an amazing job. Um, <laughs> and like I was saying at lunch, when I was, I looked right back to the very beginning, and you have this very consistent look and feel. And there's an element there of fashion and art and creativity that's been amazing right from the beginning. Oh, and I think you. that's part of what... <laughs> You know, and you have. I'm not worried about it not <laughs> looking cohesive. <laughs> no, and it doesn't. You know, I mean, you can approach it however you want. And you guys talked about a lot of what you've done is intentional. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you've got this this fashion sense that 
you were saying you can use to reach a much larger audience than just the folks in agriculture, even though yeah. most of the people yeah. on your page are and in that's agriculture. that's definitely why we started it. Yeah. Because we, we are into fashion. We wanted to keep that a part of it and to reach more people. So, yeah, yeah. We, we didn't want to be just agriculture because then you're just talking to other farmers and there's such a disconnect in society where your food comes from and, um, and who, who's yeah. producing it and, yeah. It's just we wanted to talk to a bigger audience if we were going to do this platform. So, then we also wanted to and have also, fun with yeah, the fashion side and being the creative. The fashion side is fun. It's super creative. Um, days that we do a in, like an intense shoot where like maybe that two-faced one, it took a little bit more time where we were half farmers, half glammed up. That one took a bit more time, but it was really fun because most of our shots are 10 to 20 minutes. That's it. And that one was maybe an hour and a half. Yeah. But it was fun, so we enjoy it. It's kind of a creative outlet for us. Well, it's fascinating because your story is very much you guys just being authentic in your daily life, us kind of getting a window into your lives and your all the cool things that you guys do. But the art, that takes some planning and some, some work. Yeah, Who's the sometimes. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes honestly, random. A lot but. of this time it's like, we don't have a picture for today. What are we doing? The Valentine's Just make it up like, as you go. Yeah. <laughs> it was just Valentine's Day. We did a, some Valentine's makeup. Stephanie, honestly, those were like... Zit patches. Zit patches that look like hearts. hearts. <laughs> and she's like, let's just stick these on our face. So yeah. that's how that happened. And it honestly <laughs> took 10 minutes to do our makeup. Yeah. 10 minutes to do the shot. And that was it. And it looks like we put a lot of effort in. We did. But it was just a... Off yeah. the cuff, let's stick these to our face, let's go. It's very hard to, like, plan, a, for us to plan a shoot. It's, like, very, like, the day before would be the most yeah. we'd ever plan. I see. We, Unless we have, like, some crazy idea, but usually, yeah. yeah. We're usually just winging it. Um, yeah. We have a lot of inspiration from other creative people on Instagram. Yeah, like, like Tezza is a big inspiration. Yeah, Tezza We all want to be Tezza. Yeah. <laughs> really? Who's Tezza? She's know. a big fashion influencer. She's a musician. She's just another woman who's extremely strong, doing all these creative things, so many outlets. Um, she's a big inspiration for she's us. She's from New say. York, yeah. yeah. So who are you guys following? Is it a lot of fashion? or? I would say it's a like, mix. It's a mix. Our page, who we're following, is very similar to our page because we would be following... Um, fashion brands, models. Millennial farmer. Millennial Love farmer, that yeah. Guy. High yeah. heels and canola fields. So. Yeah. Nickelback. He's actually our cousin. It's funny. Get out! <laughs> no way! I don't know if we should admit that. Oh gosh, everybody's gonna hate really? us. Really? <laughs> We're gonna lose all our followers. Everybody loves them. Don't worry. <laughs> no. they're, just, they're just saying that. No, it's just a but friend. I think somehow we're like. Did we're you see like, them when like, they came to Brandon? You no, must have. No, must have been VIP. No, what? No. We are like maybe. I don't four. think he doesn't know. Our us. grandpas, <laughs> our great grandpas, or grandpas were cousins. I don't know how it works, but we're very distant. Yeah. yeah, you don't get the VIP pass. No, no. Jeez. No. We try not to tell people that. Oops. <laughs> Chad well, the whole Kruger internet knows out. now. Yeah. Everybody, yeah, we can't edit it out. Not. <laughs> Chad, <laughs> Chad won't even know what happened. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> yeah. You can just edit in some no. cool, like, Nickelback video at that point. Sure. <laughs> no. You know, the one with the house and they're all partying at the Yeah, board. yeah, yeah. Definitely haven't been there. No. Never seen <laughs> they them. They never live. invited us there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when we get big time on the two of us. Maybe coming on your show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Chad, how's the new tour coming in 2025? Yeah. Um, so you guys are, are your, your reach seems to be exploding quickly. I mean, you could sort of chart your bell curve here. What is it that you want to use your platform for? You talk about mental health, but you want to reach the consumer too. You think you can do some good there? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a big issue right yeah, now. like where your food comes from um is important so we like to do a post on that um we don't like to throw companies under the bus or anything but we like to promote companies that are um supporting local and i don't know this big fast food kick there was one company that was very much anti-hormones and some of the other fast food companies were not pushing that and that anti-hormone thing um it's just a lot of fear mongering, I think. So just kind of showing people that you shouldn't believe everything you um, read in the media or see. See with celebrities. Um, and, yeah. yeah, like the big um, 
negative push on cattle industry right. right now and stuff instead of getting your information from celebrities like get it from the farmer we're not cattle farmers but go talk to a cattle farmer yeah get your information new mexico from milk made is a good one for dairy yeah. and yeah yeah the like, account yeah yeah like instead of getting instead of the average public getting their information from these other sources get it from the farmers there's a lot of good instagram accounts that are from yeah, farmers and that, that are you, really that willing are, to talk yeah. to you yeah so we want to be one of those voices i don't think we're going to change the world but just be one of those voices that people can ask not that we know all the answers either but we're in this industry so what do you want what do you actually want consumers to know about what you do um, well, a lot of people think it's big commercial farms, and I don't think that's true. There are a lot of big farmers, but a lot of it is these small, like we're a family farm. It's yeah. the two of us and our dad, um, and we're making malt barley. Like, that's where your beer is coming from. And that, like, farm. food has never been safer than it is now. Like, a lot of people are so concerned about organic and stuff like that. And, you know, in North America, we're very privileged with the food that we have. And other countries are not that privileged. Like, they're just happy to have food. And I think we've kind of lost that in society that um, we just need to be grateful for what we have. And and we need farms to continue the way we are and have conventional farming. And mm -hmm. organic's not maybe the answer. So do you guys think if you're... Uh, positive positive for long enough it's going to have some impact we are a little controversial at times like when we post about chemical because we are both ground <laughs> yeah. crew for uh, <laughs> we're both ground crew for our dad's spray business and <clears throat> people don't like when we talk about chemical but there's not very much chemical coming out of those booms and it's important to talk about that like the technologies that the chemical companies have is pretty incredible that they can um take care of these plants and get enough yield to feed the world. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think that's important. I don't think chemicals are wonderful by any means. Like I would love to eat organic solely too. And we have a, we have our own garden. We make our own food that way, but there has to be a balance. You cannot feed the world on organic only. And there are a lot of um, negative side effects to organic. You need more land. You need more fossil fuels. You're going over the soil a lot more. Um, and people don't talk about that side of it. There's yeah. not, it's not black and white. It sounds like a pretty, it's a pretty word. Like it's a yeah. nice word, but it's not yeah. black and white. There's, it's not, there's more to the solution than just organic or conventional. You yeah. need to kind of show the consumer that. And I don't think the media does a good job explaining that maybe. Well, now the bigger concern is that we only have 10 years to live unless we stop using coal. Yeah. So who cares? We're all doing it anyway. <laughs> 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 Time is running out. Yeah. Enjoy it while it lasts, but it, yeah, that is a big conversation going forward in agriculture. Mm -hmm. How do you guys see yourself as part of the part of the the matrix here? Uh, our, our prime minister, which I don't want to get too political here, but he oh. just said, <laughs> 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 "Well, we're gonna." But I mean, our, our prime minister just said, "If you're not doing business that aligns with climate change, then you're not doing business." How do you guys see what you guys do on the farm? There is no way you can't There's no get way away you from can't using farm. diesel. Yeah, yeah like <laughs> they don't have electric <laughs> tractors, yeah. so you Yeah, like the problem is not from the farmers. You, you gotta start putting pressure on those on companies, companies to, to make yeah. technology. And I think I don't know, I don't wanna get into that so much because it's like a very difficult problem. But mm -hmm. if you crush farmers with carbon tax and stuff that's where your food's coming from so you gotta be a little careful with that i think and if you're gonna tax people to death with carbon tax like you gotta be putting that towards solutions mm -hmm. which i don't know if we are. should be paying <laughs> us for the carbon that we're putting back into the soil mm -hmm. yeah and all the oxygen that's created via the plants that we fertilize and exactly, etc yeah. and so forth yeah but yeah. You guys are in a unique opportunity with your reach, especially, you know, being able to reach the larger public to, to talk to them about this kind of stuff that maybe others can't in a way that's meaningful because mm -hmm. uh, they might get you and like you because you're, you know, fashionable and funny and, and cool and all those things. Also, oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> but you guys aren't fashionable and funny? I mean, uh, what I, don't know, but, yeah, I would cool. describe ourselves as very dorky, dorky maybe. But. Why would you come on this show, <laughs> two people in front of a fern, if you weren't funny and fashionable? I don't know. <laughs> so, um, 
<laughs> but yeah, so back to the farming. What do you are you? How do you see this whole precision ag world? Are you guys getting involved? You got any fancy technology? Or you just keep it simple, stupid? Or? Um, we're pretty simple. Yeah. We got some old GPS. <laughs> <laughs> we got some old like the Trimble uh, manicure model or what? the wheel. Uh, we our it. combines don't have. Anything. Yeah, we run our combines without GPS. Um, like no auto steer, but our sprayer and our drill are on auto steer. Um, we're just kind of cheap with that. Like we, our farms, the equipment we have now, we're not upgrading it. We're kind of going to focus more on buying land at this point and not upgrading any equipment. That's kind of where our strategy is at the so moment. Buy some more land, eh? Perhaps. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> see if I'll next Hopefully year. someone in Rivers is listening. It's, and Yeah, and yeah. Help the phone's starting to ring. Help us out. <laughs> <laughs> for land. <laughs> for a deal. <laughs> 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 Looking for a good deal. <laughs> Putting it out there. Yeah. That's cool. As far as farming philosophy goes, you guys keep it pretty simple. That's you have a couple yeah. core values when it comes to farming, the farm business? Yeah, we're pretty simple, I would say. We do pretty much... Like, we... We do a lot of, our dad likes to do little experiments. Like he was one of the first people to do the straight cutting in our area and stripper headers, well, and stripper headers mm. for our wheat and our barley to get it off quicker so it doesn't get rained on. He likes to do these little um, things and the neighbors are always a little weirded out, but sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. The straight cutting was really good. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, it's good if you can weird the neighbors out just yeah, a bit. Yeah, like the neighbors. You don't want them all, too calm. Like a year that we <laughs> grew our whole farm of straight cut canola, they were like far phoning our dad, like, hey, we can come up with a swath here. Like, is there want to have an now? intervention? Yeah, yeah. So, they really wanted to swath for us. But we keep it pretty simple, just because we have so much else going. Like it's our dad is Springland um, manufacturing, and then the airplanes. So we try to keep it simple so that that part of our life is pretty low key, I guess, like in terms of risk. We do little plots that would be changing it up every year, but for the most part, we keep it low risk to keep focus on the other things in our life. So you guys are entrepreneurs from a long line of entrepreneurs. Tell me about that. Yeah, our whole family really is. Love yeah, it. Yeah, our grandpa, our Tell mom, me more. Dad. Uh, our grandpa used to farm and then uh, it got taken away from him, and then he started up a grout like backhoe company um, plumbing. So then our uncle took that over this year, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then our dad started Springland with his two brothers in the '80s, '85. Mm -hmm. They make grain, grain handling equipment, and they only started to do that because they bought some bin sweeps in the '80s, and they didn't like them. They thought they were not good quality and they proposed making their own to Dave Wall with Wall Grain and that just took off. They Dave Wall bought some product from them and the rest is history. They are still big partners with Dave or with Wall Grain. That's one of our biggest dealers. Um, and they sell worldwide and it's a pretty cool company. It's amazing. I guess I should say our grandpa and our mom's side had the farm and then started his own company. Yeah. And our dad's, like our Opa farmed. Yeah. When they came here. Yeah. So, yeah. What's so, your, what's your dad's craziest invention he's ever made? Well, I would say the most influential one would be the U trough. He was a big push behind that U trough unload in the nineties. Yeah. And then we he produced this UTL forty. Maybe some of you have it. <laughs> um, <laughs> go buy one. Go buy one. <laughs> it's the Real best, best um, You guys should sponsor the podcast. Yeah, it's the best <laughs> truck loading auger on the market. I would say it's um in Very between fast. a conveyor and an auger because that U trough shape allows the grain to be damaged much less than a traditional auger. It also has way higher capacity. Um, because it'll fill to the top with no constriction points and that auger has really changed um, the industry and this year a different company copied it which is a big form of flattery I would say absolutely yeah. so and he was a big that was that he was, was the first yeah they were the first ones to come out with a U-Trop unload and now it's kind of industry standard yeah so so I'd say that's maybe one of his cra it's crazy because at the time nobody was doing that and he really pushed it and they did a lot of testing with the brothers and the company and it just took off so it's pretty cool well we were talking about your dad as a character in the pantheon of people that are showing up on your page 
and how much people love him and how charismatic it is. And I think part of it is authenticity because yeah, yeah. to catch a man like that on social media, you know, doing the stories, it's not something that most guys yeah. or your dad's generation like, pick up. Yeah, we're very fortunate that he doesn't care that we do social yeah. media yeah. while farming. Yeah, yeah. it's very exciting. seems to play into it. And like, yeah. he, likes it. he honestly he likes, likes it. it. There's times where we want to get a shot and we're like extremely busy. There's rain coming and we'll just get a two second picture for our page and He's right into it with us. He'll, yeah. he'll be jumping in there. Yeah. Well, you said he's your biggest fan. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I think people actually like him more than us. Yeah, he's, he's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> he's, do you think he's going to get his own page? Well, he has his own page. Oh, he does have yeah, his own he page. Does have he's his one of those guys page. that doesn't have a profile picture and he's never posted, or does he no, actually act? He posts, he posts, yeah, occasionally. That's good. Yeah. He mostly goes on Instagram to look at Boston Terriers. Like one day at work. <laughs> We, it was raining or something, so we were, we were sitting in the we truck. Love dogs. <laughs> yeah. We were sitting in the truck for probably an hour looking at Boston Terrier videos. <laughs> yeah. So mm. he's he's yeah. on Instagram. He likes it. Oh, he loves it. Yeah. yeah, he loves Instagram. Yeah. So he's a pilot. He is a pilot. And he just won an award. Yeah, he won Pilot of the Year this year yeah. for um, C AAA Canadian Aerial Applicators. So what does that mean? How do you get nominated and become a recipient um, of that? Somebody in the industry has to nominate you. So his and um, you've had to have been in the industry for a few years. Like yeah, I think years. you have to be in the industry for at least five, five years. years. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the other criteria was, but mm -hmm. um, some people in the industry have to nominate you. So um, business partners of his earlier plane, um, they nominated him. That's and amazing. he won it. So it was pretty cool. We all went to Victoria last week and he got the award and then we all got the flu at the banquet. So no, you didn't get hey, to celebrate. <laughs> coronavirus or just a regular flu? No, it was a regular flu. Oh, okay. This is a terrible awesome. joke, but he was drinking a Corona. Yeah, we were in Chinatown. <laughs> we were in Chinatown. Did you guys have your masks on? Did you wash your hands? We did, but we still ended up with the flu. But it was only 24 hours, so we got through it. Well, you get quarantined for two weeks in Victoria. It's not no, the worst sentence. It was definitely not no. good. And the weather's pretty nice. Oh, it it's pretty beautiful there. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Travel seems to be a component of your life. Tell I us definitely more about that. like to travel and yep. see the world. <laughs> <laughs> the monkeys in Florida. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I had no idea until this enthralled. year. Enthralled. That's not. We, they're not natural. native there though. No. no we that was, but that's like escaped circus monkeys type thing. It was escaped. Um, <laughs> Silver Springs. Back in like the park monkeys, 60s or 70s, years. a guy released them onto an island thinking they'd be a good <laughs> attraction, not realizing that they can swim. So they just swam off the island. And then he did it again, <laughs> put them on the same island, and then they so swam off again. There's a lot. We probably, we were on a kayak, like a five mile kayak, and we probably saw 80 monkeys or more. Yeah. Uh, they have taken over that little river. Very aggressive. They're as not, well. are they friendly? Um, they look like little buggers. They didn't have hurt us, but <laughs> when, well, when we got back, they yeah. said they have been known to bite tourists. Um, yeah, and they carry bad and they diseases. Can jump. So. They can jump anywhere. Like, you're on the river with them, and they could easily jump on your paddleboard or whatever. But. We got quite close to them, but then I read an article after, and yeah, we should probably not have been that close. Cause yeah, it was a little scary. But we, <laughs> we do like to travel, and we do like to travel with no plans. Um, yeah, we like to go places and just meet up with locals and do whatever they would do. Yeah. We don't like to do very touristy things. One of the, our best trips we've ever been on, we went to Chile um, two years ago. Yeah. My husband was water skiing there um, at the Worlds. And he, so we went there and it was just incredible. After we did a hike in the Andes, um, the people on that hike told us to go to this private beach we went there, stayed at a hostel. We were the only ones in this beach town in Chile with like was, 100 foot cliffs, yeah. the ocean, the crabs, most beautiful place, best surf. It was incredible. And then um, we met two guys there who paid for us to go to a winery the next, our last day because we had offered them fish we bought on the beach. So we like to just travel really organically and meet people and let just go with the flow and see where it takes us because yeah. we just followed the locals there and it was a it was very rewarding we got to see things we never would have otherwise it was really cool yeah there's a couple islands off chile where most of the world's fertilizer came from before 1908 when the haber bosch process was invented oh that's oh, cool i didn't know that I didn't yeah know that either. it's very a cool. very unique place in the world it, it is because it's so stunning. long and skinny they have so many different climates like best food i've ever yeah. had in my life was there and we've been to Italy. 
And Italy Ooh. had good food too. Yeah, yeah. I would say Chile was a weird we're, we're foodies. We're, yeah, yeah. I'm, no, you guys live like the best life. I would say I am the hardcore food snob. Yeah. This is why everybody's living vicariously through you. Guys. Well, like, we like to do things in a really like follow the locals, go to a local restaurant, never go to chains. And you I don't, get such yeah. good experiences from that, I think. Yeah. Like, we're foodies, but, like, in a... Let's we don't, I don't like, pop like, shop, super right? expensive food, yeah. but it's, it's just got to be good. Yeah. Unique so. food. Unique and good. Shout out to the Firehouse Lunch was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Firehouse Shangela is one of my faves. Yeah. 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 There's some good restaurants in Brandon, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there is. There's some real gems. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we avoid those chains, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. So you guys seem to have a really close dynamic. Um, well, we do everything together. So yeah, I least, have to. At least on social media, I don't know. Like, um, yeah, I'm loud and I handle... Very loud in the morning. Yeah, and I handle everyone. my... Loud in the morning. <laughs> I would that's say, a great treat. I would say if we get in an argument, I want to get it out now. Like, I want to hash it out and yell. Not yell, but like... Let's hash it Sometimes out. Sometimes it's yelling. Sometimes yelling, maybe. Sometimes yelling. And <laughs> then Steph will get... No punching, though, right? Or kicking? Well, maybe when we're Sam young, might, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but she might Steph stop. gets really quiet, and it drives me insane because she won't say anything for a few days. Just like our dad, if he gets annoyed, he just won't say anything. She's more like your dad? <sighs> yeah. I'm more like our mom, I would say, in the way we handle it. But yeah. we do fight. We do fight uh, here and there. Quite a bit, yeah. <laughs> No, I don't it's know. It's going to be a disagreement today. I got the referee here. No. no, we yeah. don't fight a lot. I think we just don't. We don't, <laughs> hide, we don't hide the fact that when you Some do think, everything yeah. together, you're going to have disagreements. Yeah, well, people yeah, think we never fight. In a pod, yeah. Right? Like, my husband is afraid of conflict, so he thinks conflict's not real. And, you know, it's real. If you're going to spend real. a lot of time together. It's in together, your face. It's happening right now. Yeah. If you're going to spend a lot of time together, we work together. Our we friends together. are the same. Yeah, we do everything. We together. show horses together. Is there anything together. you don't know about each other? Mm -hmm. I'm sure there is. Oh, yeah. Secrets, for sure. <laughs> 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 no. Things you don't know about me. It's but yeah, like pretty media. much everything is together because even like we water ski and we horse ski yeah. too. Yeah. Like, even our fun sports, our are, hobbies, like, our work, every day, our every life. Day you guys yeah. see the guys together. Everything. And our family still goes on uh, like Christmas every year. We still year. have supper with our parents like five times a week. No. Yeah, we're really maybe not that we're much. just a close knit family. Yeah. So yeah. there's fights, they happen. It's life. But Isn't we usually that why the gifts so with farming that you can. Be yeah. that close? Yeah, I think so. We like, honestly wouldn't see our dad if we did. Yeah, he's a workaholic, work and that's a big part of why I got into farming in the first place because you just don't see him otherwise. Like, our mom doesn't see our dad very no. often. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, at least he's in the stories him. now. Oh, yeah. He's on Instagram. Yep. Yeah. He works a lot. Is your mom part of the farm as well? Uh, she runs parts for us and stuff. And, and food. food. We would, yeah, we would starve without her, really. Yeah. yeah. She, she makes a mean supper meal mm. they're always epic yeah, yeah like spaghetti squash and i don't know lazy man cabbage rolls no, she I makes like those oh i do <laughs> <laughs> she makes a mean yeah like greek food she'll bring greek food to the field sometimes yeah. like she, really she knocks it out of the park that is sweet yeah good for her <laughs> mm-hmm so what's next for the tulips? You're just getting started. You're going to be on the CBC. You're going to be on what the farm podcast. You're going to be on. Uh, yeah. We've got a few Netflix photo shoots coming up. No, I don't know. We're going to be I am on Netflix. Oh yeah, you have a subscription. No, she actually is. On <laughs> I am on Netflix. Let's hear it. <laughs> Let's hear it. How'd you get on Netflix? Why don't you? Tell I me was an you? extra uh, for a little while. I did go to modeling. I was a model for a, a minute. And um, one a Hollywood minute. Of the day yeah, on. and I was an extra on this show called what was it called the Pinkertons. Pinkertons, I think it's the Pinkertons. The Pinkertons, yeah. and I was like uh, as in the old detective agency. Yeah, from, and they uh, filmed it north of Winnipeg. And she's a That's faded so blur in the background. Yeah, you would only be able to see me if you're <laughs> what, really looking for me. What minute is that of the? I feel like it's episode oh. thirteen or something. <laughs> oh, she knows <laughs> episode thirteen. Minutes, I don't know if it's thirteen and a half. Know. No, I'm just kidding. No, I don't. I don't know if that's correct but you i don't think you'll be able to find me because these guys didn't even no. know was, was there was there a proclivity to be a, an actress when you grew up no but like i the modeling agency the modeling agency i went to vancouver for a modeling competition and i won an acting thing you had to do the acting just with our agency <laughs> anyways i won this acting thing which is 
Do you so want it? Crazy, because I'm not. I don't. She's very she's quiet. Natural. I don't yeah, feel like most I've heard her good at networking. Aunt, aunt. No. <laughs> Anyways. At least you get to know each other a little yeah. bit here. That's great. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm on, I'm on Netflix. Yeah. So you know. might be doing some acting all. I mean, if, if you guys are open to anything We're that open comes to, along. You know what? That's a big part of our the way our parents raised us was to be very open-minded. So we, if an opportunity presents itself, we will jump on it because you never know who you're going to meet. But yeah, I would say open-mindedness is very key to the way they raised us. So. Just jumping on every opportunity. Yeah, like our dad so you're, just, you're like yes man in the, or the, the yeah, movie. Yeah, to a point. Yes, I mean like. Know, uh, East Venture. Yeah, we, yeah. Like that movie, I hate that actor. <laughs> yeah. You hate? That actor. Okay, tell us Whatever. more about that. No, I don't care. I just don't like him, so that movie. <laughs> Jim Carrey, you hate Jim Carrey? I'm I only very, like him in the Grinch. Canadian of us. I like him wow. at the Grinch, okay. that's about so it. Folks, so far we've got Nickelback, we've got Jim Carrey. Yeah, we Carrey. don't like these people. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, as we were talking about positive Canadian icons yeah, that we yeah. just don't see eye to eye with. <laughs> yeah. yeah, anyway, open mindedness. <laughs> Back to the positivity That's of our channel. That's what we like to put. <laughs> no hate, only love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except for certain actors and actresses <laughs> yeah. and bands, rock bands. You will have a lot of opportunities, it looks like, coming up here. And it was funny because... Yeah, this week is kind of slammed. This week is nuts, yeah. We've never had this many things going on with the tulips. Um, this week we're pretty slammed. So it's kind of fun. Like, it's exciting. It's different work than what we would normally be doing on the farm or with the business. You know, I wanted to get you guys on the show before you got too famous for the show. Oh, I, don't uh, think we're, uh, I don't think we'll listen. ever be too famous. <laughs> I was like, God, I get these girls before there's they been, get booked up. We've had the tulips for two years, and there's been maybe five moments where somebody has said, you're the tulips, and it's hilarious. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> where they were excited to see us, which is cool. Like, we love it. Come say hi. <laughs> Well, you guys are very cool. I'm sure your fan base is going to continue to grow. And um, do you have any goals that you set out? You said you were very intentional when you started the page. Do you have any specific goals or are you just... We'd really, really like a sponsorship from Milwaukee Tools. No. Yeah, Milwaukee Tools. <laughs> Give us a shout yeah, out. Like no. that that grease gun they have. Frick, they make the best tools. That They're just the You guys are sponsored though. You got a few sponsors in there? Sure, but not Milwaukee Tools. Okay, this Milwaukee is a big gap Tools. In your yeah, it's a big gap. And I mean, <laughs> we are the biggest supporter of that grease gun where you can set how many pumps you want. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. When Before I started farming your hand, hand? Oh, the bruise on your hand from greasing. Are this you kidding me? Incredibly painful. Yeah. That, well, maybe they'll send some money your way for these kind words. That's yeah. what we hope. Are you famous enough to get us a Milwaukee sponsorship? <laughs> Just kidding. I can send an email to yeah, somebody. Let's do in it. That. <laughs> Carhartt. Carhartt. Yeah, we'd like. Yeah, that'd be cool. We'll do a Carhartt. We, yeah, you looks. know what? We would. We would like to do something like that. Like, yeah, we like partner with a brand and get honestly, some design stuff. If, that'd you, be if fun. we grew big enough, um, that would be like a really far away dream. But you could do. It would be cool to do something like that, like Carhartt times the tulips and make women's workwear a little bit more fashionable. Yeah, because everything, there is nothing for women's workwear. When you go to Mark's Work Warehouse, it's, it's nothing. It's impossible to find steel I buy men's workwear. jackets really? all the time. Mm -hmm. And, like, if you get any girl stuff, it's, like, hot pink or purple. There's no, like, chill colors. Timberland is the it's only very, one that produces yeah. steel-toed work boots for women that are somewhat stylish. I yeah. think like there's I have, yeah mine are moxie. She, she has some, good. but they just reek. This They're very like stinky. Work very stinky. Yeah, here. like we could do some criticism on the women's workwear because she yes. has a pair that look cool, but they don't breathe. Yeah, and they're very they reek. smelly. The Timberland ones are the only smelly ones clothes that. Smelling for women is a big issue. Yeah, well, it's her feet, but they don't. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the rest of me is smelling fine. <laughs> But Maybe yeah. we can get some smell-oriented <laughs> well, you know uh, sponsors Honestly, on the show. We have talked yeah. about that, like how it would be cool to work with a brand um, and just produce like a micro line for the tulips or something, just to make it a little more stylish. And because I think that would go with our brand yeah. and the way it is. So you would collaborate with them yeah. to create something bigger. Yeah. And they could have reach too and promote you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that, that would, would be, be a cool. big dream. I think we're way too small for that at this point, but maybe in the future. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> what would you say to someone who's not on Instagram? Why, Why not? the heck not? It's so positive. 
<laughs> I honestly, I love Instagram. I loved it before. It's, I hate, like, Facebook is just kind of toxic sometimes, I think. And Instagram, you get to connect with people. And, and it's nice pictures. I love and, pictures. Yeah. I've always loved pictures. Like, a good picture is just so powerful, and I think it's fun to be in that platform and seeing other people's creativity. It's really cool. Yeah. I like it. And it's there's no pressure there. There's no, like, I don't know, political advertisements and stress. It's very carefree, so it's a nice place to go if you need a five-minute break or whatever. Or and not. honestly, our community, <laughs> our community on there is really cool. We've met really neat people through it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, how is it when people know you and you don't know them? I mean, it's celebrity, right? Oh, I <laughs> It's I cool. had one dad come up to me at a farm show with his son, and he was like, "Yeah, my wife wants a picture with you and my kid." So, sign yeah. an autograph. Yeah, we've had a couple moments where people know us. Like, it doesn't becoming, happen very often. Yeah, it does. It doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, it's pretty cool. It's very flattering that people even care enough to want our picture. Um, it's mm-hmm. pretty flattering because we're just yeah, some little farm girls that yeah, take pictures. So dorky. it's pretty cool. It is cool. Is there anything else you want your fan base to know before we wrap up this show mm-hmm. on uh, two people in front of a fern? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They I guess, to- yeah, like the other thing we just try to push is you can be whatever you want to be. A lot of people say you don't look like farmers and it's like, well, what does a farmer look like? And yeah, so yeah, we just really try to push. You can be multifaceted. You don't have to just look like a certain way or you can be many different things yeah like don't judge people you have no idea what's going on behind that person's look i think and that is a big part of how we were raised and society is so quick to cut everybody down on how you look and that is a big element of what we are too we don't want like we don't look like farmers okay but that person doesn't look like a business owner or whatever Mm -hmm. so don't judge people so quickly (laughs) Yeah. Stop being rude. <laughs> Stop judging Nickelback. But if you hate Nickelback, <laughs> who cares? <laughs> You're in with us. And Jim Carrey and Nickelback. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's amazing. Thanks so much for coming in. It means a lot Thanks to me. Thanks for oh, having us. I've been watching you. I think you guys are absolutely amazing. What you're doing for agriculture. Oh, thank you. Close to my heart, like neighbors. <laughs> you know, um, seeing your dad to just I don't know. I think we can all relate to you know your your dad. <laughs> He's an alcoholic, you know, cool. inventor, he can yeah. fix anything. Yep. You know, steadfast. Also very, rock very the... artistic. Yeah. Is well. he? Yes. In what way is he artistic? He can paint. He did uh, two paintings when he was 10 on cardboard, and they're freaking mm. amazing. And they're a heck of a lot better than that photograph. Mm. They really are. <laughs> yeah. also, yeah, had them in the background. <laughs> yeah. He also, cutest story of all time, he designed a dress for our mom, had it made, and like that was a gift for her. And then he went so to romantic. Toronto and tried to sell it to some designers. <laughs> Did she know he was trying to sell her dress? No, like he wanted like to sell, he wanted sell the design. design. Yeah, oh, I see. Like, it wasn't like he took the one like dress. This is like early and, on in their marriage, Whoa. I think, or maybe it's dating. Very, yeah. That's Just a power a sweet, move. Yeah, very adorable. And he's like, Boom. he's like Super the points. cutest, and it's, most humble little yeah. farm dude. It's a cool dress. It's like one sleeve, black velvet, Off short. So you got the fashion from your dad. Yeah. Could have. Right? Yes. If yeah. we put these things together. Really? He's a very like stylish farmer, too. He wears yeah. skinny jeans. Yeah. Okay, skinny jeans. That's a big part of the program. Yeah. yeah. He always wears yeah. When is he going to be more of a feature in the photo shoots here? It sounds like we got to get your... Well, I mean, he could be anytime, yeah. but he's always working, so... <laughs> yeah. The odd time he makes it in there. <laughs> got to book him in. Yeah. You got to so schedule he, him in. So you take you guys flying often? Is that part of the family trips you get to... I made him take me up this summer in the 802 for the first time. It was his first... Passenger actually the 802 yeah. like the air tractor. It's a big um, it's the biggest spray, spray plane. plane in the industry turbine Yeah, yeah, he just started Boom. flying it this summer So he just nice. took that over from our other pilot. Yeah, because he's been flying a drometer, which is a piston aircraft um, a lot smaller and a lot slower a lot slower and he took over this 802 and it's pretty cool to watch him it's just it's like drunk a sports on power. car for him yeah <laughs> yeah. It's pretty yeah i like to go up with him we never go for like an actual field but he'll take no, us up and fly us around yeah. but when we're spraying like it's it's 18 hour days like we're at the airport all day and we're just working and he's a firefighter 
Uh, well, Which that's the like crop spraying. Crop the 802 yeah. fought fires. Yeah. yeah. But but they don't do that anymore with the Manitoba government cutting it, making it private. So yeah, maybe in the future, but. Well, you guys got lots on the go, and it's going to be really interesting watching your page as you go forward. And I want you guys to come speak at Manitoba Egg Days. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. It'll okay. be really good. Yeah, you guys would be great we'd be advocates. Down. We'd be up for it. Yeah, public speaking, and um, I don't know what else. You <laughs> Probably have a nervous anxiety attack. No, just well, kidding. <laughs> hey, no, it would be good. I had that for sure at it one point, but uh, you guys should be proud of what you're doing. Well, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Incredibly it's talented. And I think it's, it's really going to grow. And uh, thank you for standing up for the industry. You know, I was at uh, Farm Forum recently and someone asked Brad Wall about how best we can advocate. And he said, like, there's a number of women on social media that are reaching people like never before. And we, you know, so you guys are doing a great job. And I don't know, is it hard to be a woman in egg? We talked about that a little bit. Mm, not for us, I feel like because of our dad. Our dad's so supportive of us. But the strength thing sometimes, like for fixing stuff, I would say yeah, it's a for bit that, hard. Yeah, it is. Because uh, I'm not, you really learn how to do leverage, use leverage to your advantage. But <laughs> although sometimes, you need a long snipe. sometimes being this small is a good thing because I had to crawl behind the hopper yeah. in the combine to <laughs> yeah, fix being small is a helpful. chain on one of the augers. This, summer or this fall and i was behind the grain hopper in that little tiny space putting a pin in the chain or uh, um and bill couldn't reach it nobody could get in there or that we could that hose that hydraulic hose on the 8650 this spring oh her spider arms got hooked oh yep yeah. we were <laughs> under there for hours there was no way we could get this. i was claustrophobic in there it was but, like stuck between the engine and the frame they had to Ugh. drag you out by your ankles in the end pretty much, pretty much. so sometimes being tiny is an advantage but honestly the strength <laughs> the strength <laughs> thing is a big downfall sometimes yeah um but as far as things aren't as physical else, as they used to be though no yeah like arnold innovations really helped with yeah, your yeah. arnold innovations that reverser saves like i don't have to call anybody if my if my combine plugs, I don't have to call anybody. I can set it up. I can. I still want Doug to make it a little lighter because it's a bit heavy yet. But Doug, I can make it work. I can make it, it work. Doggy. You can do it, Doggy. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's something for women just to find those solutions those like that. Yeah, that's bushel good for, plus. Yeah, it's another good. Yeah, you guys are. Yeah, let's shout out Bushel with, Plus yeah, over here. Absolutely. Those yeah, I thought I'd throw really, that in there. <laughs> really good friends. Really they're good friends. all sponsors. Yeah, yeah. And they're awesome. Marcel is very, very love awesome. Marcel. Yeah. yeah. And Doug. Yeah, those are some two really great guys. local entrepreneurs. Yeah. Talk about supporting local. Yeah. yeah. And we really push their products. We use them both all. Marcel's going to come on the show. I, I need to have Doug on too, but. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, Marcel guys. is so awesome. Yeah. yeah. He's really cool. Yeah. Great he, inventor too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Him and your dad probably get along good. Oh, they yeah. get along great. Yeah. <laughs> they love that. Yeah. And Marcel is really um, a positive light for mental health. I think he's. Yes. He has a lot of resources because he's been through a lot and yeah that's a really yeah good, he has a really good yeah. person to talk to about incredible comeback things. incredible mm -hmm. story yeah uh, yeah what he shared there and i hope that he can come on the show and share that because i think mm -hmm. people need to hear that yeah he's one in a million I would sometimes say. we get in this place where i think we feel a little bit sorry for ourselves, but mm -hmm. in the grand scope of things once you get perspective in terms of yeah. <laughs> what can actually happen in this life yeah if we're if we're healthy and uh, yeah, I definitely see that at going to the hospital once a week. Right. Yeah. yeah. That'd, be, that'd be really helpful for you know, yeah. perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I hope Marcel comes on here. He's really good. Everybody should hear his <laughs> now story. Now that you've said it, I'll tell him. It's pretty we'll much him. incumbent upon him that he has to. <laughs> yeah. Because I'll be like the tulips said. You have to. You got to come on the show, man. <laughs> yeah. No, I've been meaning to, but I think. Yeah, I think when the time is right. Mm -hmm. um, He's awesome. Though. But we talked about forming like a little entrepreneurial group or whatever too and just share war stories between those of mm -hmm. us that are in business and kind of know what the experience is like. Yeah. I think it's running a business is in the same category as farming or mm -hmm. at least I want to be. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That's definitely. what I aspire to. Mm -hmm. But it's it's definitely a challenge as well. Yeah. Um, but no, you guys are really encouraging. I'm sure you inspire lots of people and keep doing the good work. Oh, I hope so. I don't know. I still... <laughs> Believe in yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're just some little farm girls pushing through. Well, I think a lot of this comes from our parents. They're honestly so... Um, very... They're so supportive yeah. and very open-minded. And just, they really let us be whoever we want to be. Yeah, like our mom too. She was a nurse. 
decided to go back to school because she fell asleep driving home. Went back she to school. Had, she was working three hospitals and she fell asleep while I was yeah. one year old at home and she quit and went back to school to be a teacher. Yeah. And then now she bought a company and she's doing wedding decorating with Lux premier events. So, yeah, so you, can, she's done. you can reinvent yourself. Yeah. And that's what our There's always time us. to reinvent. Yeah. <laughs> this is getting the motivation. Yeah. Wow. That's the title of your talk. Yeah. yeah. How to reinvent yourself. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so what, I think a lot what of what are you guys going to talk about when you when you talk? What? I thought you were talking at FCC thing next week, but you know, no, we're not talking. No, we're just going. To I was going to ask you what the, the title of your talk would be. No, we're just taking in the event for them and doing some posts on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you had to give a talk right now, what would the title of it be? Oh boy. Our <laughs> We gotta narrow down all our, all our things. Yeah, bring the whiteboard in here. Yeah, because we probably shouldn't talk about our whole life because we're overwhelming people. <laughs> I think I don't know, dear listener, are you uh, really overwhelmed right now? You want us to? Yeah. Dial it back, edit it down. <laughs> I don't know. No, I, I think that's think what people it. like about you. Because we haven't been asked to do any um, talks yet. And when that time, if that time comes, I guess we, we can do a cooking thought. show. What theme music would you have? Uh, probably Nickelback. Da yeah, not. <laughs> not. <laughs> 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 Just no, no, it, that would be good. Um, um, but yeah, we could do a cooking show. Yeah, I don't know. This is my you kitchen. We can do a cooking show. Well, oh. have you, you, you not seen this is my kitchen. We, yeah. we do a cooking show. The first one. I haven't, I haven't caught well, that. they're on our stories. They're, they're more of like our cousins started this and theirs was called This Is Your Kitchen and theirs was very legit. They had good videography. Then we kind of, ours was like a spoof of that <laughs> and called it, This Is My first, Kitchen. <laughs> the first one was us making sandwiches for the guys at the mm. field. While we were driving. While we were driving. She was driving and I was making sandwiches and it's... So that's like our maple leaf stock went through the roof. Like the bologna uptake I was. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. This but sandwich that... is sponsored by. Yeah. Our last maple one leaf. was gourmet tater tots, and like those yeah. are delicious. So yeah, gourmet check it check it out definitely, on our stories. Definitely make those. Yeah, they're all highlighted there. Fashion, food, family, farming. Yeah, health, we do it all. Boston interiors. <laughs> yeah. Travel. Bus interiors are key to the whole equation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can't do it without them. <laughs> well, you guys are living the life, so just keep living it. So those of us that uh, aren't aren't that exciting can live vicariously through you. <laughs> I think everyone can be excited. Yeah. Okay, ladies. Well, high fives. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was in. a weak one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look at the elbow. The connection. <laughs> that was a super weak one. <laughs> First try. We, we improved it. Yeah. As we went, so. Well, thanks for coming in. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for having us. And. Um, Good luck with everything going forward. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Hopefully You're 2020 is a little bit better than 2019 on the crop It's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be one of the best years yeah. in the history of the year. <laughs> Since last year was the worst. Yeah. Yeah. And the year before that was the worst. Is it, was it the worst year in, in your farming careers? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, our dad said it was too, in his. Yeah, it was 100% the worst year I've ever had, I think. I guess Our they, soybeans yeah. were not good. Are Worst you ready harvest. to though? Are you ready to start again? Like, it's a sentiment yeah. shifted. You're kind of feeling it. Yeah, I think our barley spring? really saved our positivity because the barley was really good. Yeah, this year. like we have no no complaints there. Um, the canola was a bit below our average, but it was okay. And the soybeans like crushed our soul. Yeah, we had <laughs> such a good run of good soybeans though. So, so yeah, we were, sounds like soybeans are gonna die in Manitoba here. Yeah, like our, our dad's very against them at this point. <laughs> okay, so, so the list now extends from Nickelback to Jim Carrey and soybeans. Man, yeah. soybeans used to be but gold I, to I, us. Yeah, I like yeah. I like growing soybeans, but they are very finicky. You gotta be careful when you put them in and the season has to be just right and it wasn't just right this year for them. So can't seem to get the right moisture at the right time yeah. and the heat units. And the heat, and yeah. That's just so gonna be under a million. They're pretty picky. That's two point three million in yeah. Manitoba and uh Two years ago, I think it was, and it sounds like they'll be under a million this year. Yeah, they were. Oh, the our average dad yield, was... I think, the average yield last year was like eight bushels. Oh, we, oh, did. we did good we then. We did good then. <laughs> winter, winter, chicken dinner. <laughs> we killed it. <laughs> <laughs> Blowing up the average soybean yields. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, great. I'm, I'm happy for you about your soybeans. It's... Yeah. <laughs> That they barely paid for themselves, so it's great. <laughs> break even. I don't think they did pay for themselves. Nobody them. should ever have any more expectations in farming than break even. Let's yeah, be real in the yeah. long term. Yeah. You just look for your line to go up. So. Yeah. Yeah.
Cool. Well, good luck, ladies, yeah, on everything you. you're about to do. You're going to kill it. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see, yeah. we'll see about that. <laughs>